and that kind of didn't work out. There was uh, some some conflicts with the with the other programmer and stuff. And uh, Ed and I were, you know, we we knew we worked well together, so we decided to, as a side project, we were going to make Meat Boy. And Meat Boy was just going to be a small hundred level game on WiiWare because that was uh, that was the only console that we we knew we could put it on is because we had talked to Nintendo we we uh, split the cost of a development kit uh, that's yeah so we, so we we basically we were like well we'll just do the small game on WiiWare and just kind of see just kind of see where where it goes because we were waiting for the whole Gish 2 thing to work out um, so we we started working on it and it got to the point where Gish 2 was actually going to be canceled and we talked with Microsoft and uh, this was after an event in London where we showed the game, it was a Nintendo event, where we showed the game and people loved it. They flipped over it totally. And we only had 12 levels and it was only, I think, five months in development or something. So we knew that we had something good on our hands and since Gish 2 was going to be cancelled, since we couldn't really work with the other programmer, uh, we decided to try uh, what's called in business a switcheroo, and it's it's where you uh, switch stuff. So we talked to Microsoft, and they said, "Well, Gish Two is not going to happen, but we have this game, Meat Boy, that all these people are really liking, and it it would be a good fit for XBLA." And we kind of went back and forth with them for several several months until they finally caved and said, "Yeah, we'll we'll have it on XBLA," and it was. That was basically it. I mean, the, the, the way we met and the way we actually started working together was more, it was in no way business. Like, we are not business people in the slightest. We're horrible at it. <laughs> but we, we're good at making games, and we're good at, I mean, we're, we're friends. I mean, we talk on Skype all the time. Um, we play Magic together. We, we're just very similar people. So, yeah. And, I mean, it, it works out well because when you're making a game with a friend, then not only are you, you have like this support structure, and it was it was really nice going through development because there were days that I would break down and be like, I don't want to do this anymore, and Ed would help me out. And then there was days that Ed would be like, This is stupid. We we sh you know, and this all happened at the end of development. Nowhere near like <laughs> it was the last two months of development when Microsoft was having us finish four months worth of work in like three weeks. That was that was when all of that stuff happened. But I mean it was it was just a good experience working together and I think it's because we're we're friends and we're we're friendly with each other and mm -hmm. business actually plays no part in anything that we do. Which is kind of funny. That's really awesome. But I have to ask, where do the jelly beans come in? The jelly beans were because uh that was at the IGF, so I had a game uh, up in the IGF for technical excellence, and uh, this was my first GDC, this was my first introduction to uh, the indie scene altogether, and um, so I go, you know, this, you, you walk into this giant awards ceremony hall, and there's these giant screens everywhere, and there's literally like, I think there's like 2,000 people in this place for these awards ceremonies. Jeez. And, yeah, so I walk into that after like after a full day of like showing my game to hundreds and hundreds of people on the GDC floor, mm -hmm. and I I hadn't eaten very well that day because I was busy because I uh, the game that I had made I made by myself I didn't have anybody else making it with me so it was up to me to make sure that I, it was being demoed properly and uh, the jelly beans are actually because I'm I'm a type one diabetic and stress like destroys me oh it yeah it makes my blood sugar drop like crazy. Um, so the jelly beans were there because as they were announcing the, well, well, first I walk into the hall and I automatically feel like, oh, wow, I'm going to die because <laughs> I feel, I feel my blood sugar just go, Chew. and so I start, yeah, no pressure. Start, yeah, yeah. I just start cramming jelly beans. It's, it's awesome. It's pretty overwhelming when you go in there though. It is yeah, though, like, like I still get, I still get nervous if I have nothing to do with it. Like just going, going in there. And being in there, it's it's very overwhelming. There's like, it's dark, and there's crazy lights just moving around everywhere. And you like look to the left, and there's like, John Romero, and you look to yeah, the right, yeah. and there's there's Miyamoto, and like, oh. you're like what the fuck there, am I doing here? Kojima, right over 
over there, and there's John Carmack, and you're like, wow, why am I sitting at a table next to Gabe Newell? It's very, very, very <laughs> uh, Yeah, like even this last year, we weren't up for anything. Um, but it's it's still, when you walk into the awards ceremony, it is, it's huge. It's, it's, I, you know, because I had watched, like I said, when I went, when I was nominated, I went back through all of the previous, uh, the, the, the previous winners, and I watched every single one of them. I watched every single award ceremony. Well, up until 2008, they were like held in, I guess, what was like a small hall, or it was either a different hall, or they didn't have the production budget that they did for the, the latest one. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in 2008, because it went from, you look at it on the stream, and it's like in front of a curtain, and the lighting's kind of whatever, <laughs> and there's like just random people up there talking, you don't know who they are, and then when I walk into this thing, there's like a 40-foot fucking screen <laughs> that has this IGF logo flying around it, and then these two other screens, and then this giant VIP area, and then like wow. all these seats, and so yeah, as soon as you walk into it, yeah, it just, it's like being punched in the stomach, and for me, it was basically all of the... Uh, <laughs> all of the sugar in my body was gone and I was I was feeling awful so I had to I had to cram jelly beans I, I didn't win either so after oh. after I crammed all those jelly beans my sugar was like 370 which it's supposed to be 100 so yeah that was fun Tommy's not allowed to win anything as part of the rules no, I, <laughs> I have not won more awards than anybody ever <laughs> there's an award for that quite a few. I've been nominated for tons and tons, but I've never won one. I've never won an IGF award. The only award I won was an Intel award for uh, multi-threading that game that went into the IGF. That was it. <laughs> That's the only thing I won. And it didn't come with a trophy. All, they, they had the gall just to give me $15,000 and send me Oh, all right, well, let's move to Super Meat Boy. Uh, will you explain to the listeners what the premise of Super Meat Boy is? What is the story about? Let's go to Edmund. Um, Super Meat Boy is a game. This is weird because I feel like I'm quoting the movie. I'm hearing my voice. Is yeah. is a game about a uh, a boy without skin who's trying to save his girlfriend who's made of bandages from a fetus in a jar wearing a tuxedo and a monocle and a top hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a, it's like a Twitch platformer. It's very difficult, and it's a, a big playoff of Mario. And kind of like Tommy and I, it's 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 our rewriting Mario in a way, like a re envisioning of Mario if we made it. Um, that's that was the basic premise. Like um, in a lot of ways, it's 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 the like when both Tommy and I were young. I think we both had dream games that like he was talking about, like with his friend talk, brainstorming the ultimate crossover between Sonic and Mario and how great that game would be. And like, I always wanted to make a game that was like Mario meets Mortal Kombat or something like Mario with an edge. Cause I was the kind of guy, I was the kind of kid who like, I felt like Genesis was made for me because it, they, they told me it was because it was edgy, you know? And I was supposed, I was like, I was an edgy kid, right? But I didn't like it. And like, I went and bought a Genesis and I got Sonic and I'm like, I do not like this. Like, this is just not for me at all. So I went back to Nintendo, but I always wanted Nintendo to do something a bit more edgy and adult or something like that. And in a lot of ways, that's what Meat Boy is. It's just like the dream game that you brainstorm with your friend on the, you know, on the schoolyard at recess with. And, uh, and with with Tommy, like when I met Tommy, like he's saying, like we're we're friends. And when I met him and started working with him, it felt a lot more like having you know slumber parties. I don't know if boys call them slumber parties, sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> There's no party. I call them slumber parties. It was like a slumber party night, you know, like every single night on Skype. You mm -hmm. know, that's what it was. It was like fucking around, you know, these these jokes that just got out of control and like. It was just great, and uh, I could see really clearly that it, it just reminded me so much of my childhood and having, like, a best friend that you just, you know, joke on into the night about nonsense, and but, you know, that you can also be really creative with this person and do something awesome. And like Tommy said, like, we're really, we're not business people. We didn't do this because it's, you know, it's our business. It's 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 kind of like our dream. Like, it's just our, it's... We were we were meant to do this. We were always being pushed in this direction, and then we met and made something awesome. 
and will continue to make awesome things um, for us and not really for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, I think that's basically. It's very old basically. school in a lot old of ways. School. Like it reminds me of playing like Metroid or, you know, Sonic like that with the spinning and the jumping, you know, the bouncing off of things. And it's very, very challenging. Uh, is there a reason that you have such a, I guess the levels are so difficult and, and I mean, a lot of games now are sort of designed to make you feel good or be easy, you know, to a point where you feel rewarded. But this is definitely making you work for what you get. Well, in, a, in a lot of ways, it's, it just goes back to the whole anti-business aspect. Like, the reason why games are easy and you don't really even, you know, like, if anybody beats a game now and it sticks in their mind, it usually sticks in their mind for some written story, like the ending of some mm. game, the cutscenes, the cinematics. You know, rarely will there be a few points where it's like, oh, that was a pretty cool part of the game. Um, games from the past really stick into your head because you feel really good when you've achieved something hard, um, because games were really hard. And um, it was basically approaching design from the perspective of, like, I... People will always argue that, you know, the reason why you like retro games is because of the nostalgia factor of you being a kid and everything was cooler when you were a kid. And I don't believe that's true. I believe that games back then had something that games now don't. And I believe that something is a challenge. You know, granted, like, games back then I think were too punishing. And that was the, the thing that Tommy and I talked about a lot when, when doing knee points. Like, how can we reduce the frustration and the punishment um, to almost nothing because we want the game to be difficult. We want it to be a challenge. We want you to feel good when you achieve something, but we don't want you to throw down the controller and like <laughs> turn off the game. Like I remember, what was it? I don't. I think it was. I think it was uh, the fucking part in um, Battle Toads, the the rage <laughs> part. Yeah. Like I on my that. on my Genesis. That, part. that was that was one of the one of the only. So I'm really anal about turning the system off, then unplugging the cartridge. And like you know, you see like kids on on TV and stuff like uh, you fake it and like rip the cartridge out, and you're like, ah! Like, <laughs> I know. That was the one game where I have a clear memory of like dying like repeatedly on that, and actually grabbing the cartridge and yanking it out of the Genesis and throwing it. Mm -hmm. and, like, like I, you know, I don't. I, I wanted to avoid those uh, moments of frustration. Like a lot of people will say, you know, I rage like crazy on Super Meat Boy and I threw my controller and whatever else. And, you know, maybe that's true on some of the really fucking hard stuff, mm -hmm. but you know, the goal was to try to avoid it and, and to try to keep the focus on the, the feeling of achieving something that's difficult that not everybody in the world has done. Like everybody fucking beats Halo. It's like a, handed to you. You might as well just watch you might the, as well just watch a movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just watch it on YouTube. That's actually how uh, you and I played Heavy Rain. We just yeah, watched, that's true. I just watched the nude scene on uh, <laughs> on YouTube, and then the end where it messed up, and the guy was just kept saying uh, the kid's name over that and over at the end. Hilarious. That was yeah. hilarious. That is probably, feel like that that is probably the greatest the greatest achievement of that game. <laughs> like that that was beyond hilarity. Like that was really really entertaining. Um, what what does he yell? What's the kid's name? I don't even know. What was it? I thought it was like Steven, but I could be wrong. Jason. Was... Chat room says Jason. Jason, yeah. Jason! <laughs> Jason! <laughs> the guy's like pointing the gun at him. Yeah, that's great. That's just like a genius. I love it. They program it like that. that. Oh, that's just great. <laughs> yeah. that, that almost made me want to play the game, but I, then I just watched the YouTube video again. And I, <laughs> like, I think it would have just made you have the ability to just do stupid actions like any action in the game since it's all programmed and rigged mm -hmm. why not just like let allow the people to mod it so they can repeat the action repeatedly it would just be yeah. hilarious yeah, just <laughs> right. reaching reaching for a cup when nothing's yeah. there i have to say with super meat boy i feel kind of guilty when you kill like the bosses because then they all give you those puss in boots puppy eyes like it just seems like they all come back with the cuteness before you end up you know stomping them down or whatever she, she feel a little bad for murdering things yeah, yeah i guess okay well what <laughs> you should have seen osama bin laden's face before he was shot in the head <laughs> <laughs> he hides it well his eyes were fucking huge and they were welling up. He's and like, he just down on his knees and he says, Please. Why? 
<laughs> you know, you know what was really weird, Tommy. Do you, I don't. You probably, maybe you felt this too, because you're a very uh, sympathetic and empathetic person. I felt really bad when they killed Saddam Hussein. I did.